The Drug Alternative Program presents Drugs Close to Home. Your weekly insight into the ongoing stories of struggle, victory, and the spiritual renewal of rehabilitation. Each week, Cliff and Freddie Harris, co-founders of the Drug Alternative Program, would like to introduce you to the many people who have touched their lives through their spirit-filled ministry. But most of all, they would like to share with you the blessings they continue to receive from Jesus Christ. And now, your hosts of Drugs Close to Home, Cliff and Freddie Harris. Welcome to Drugs Close to Home, a program about the destruction that drugs causes our families. And the power of Jesus Christ to heal them. We believe every life is worth saving. And Freddie, that is so true, because every changed life is a miracle from God. Yes. You know, I was thinking about one of our blessings. You know, before I met you, the Lord gave me a blessing. You know, I was look for, looking for a Christian husband, and I joined a Christian singles group wanting some referral, but I did not get one referral. But I did receive this poem called Most Wonderful Love. And in this poem it says, Freddie, I want you to stop looking around for that perfect person and I want you to fall in love with me, Jesus Christ. You know what? I took that challenge. I said, you know what? For one year, I'm not gonna date, not gonna look for a mate. I'm gonna fall in love with Jesus Christ. And I read the book, Desire of Ages. And, and you know what, Freddie? When I was in prison, that was one of my favorite books. I found that book in, prison, in the prison library. And he spent a year with the Lord. I spent a year with the Lord. And after that year, the Lord brought us together as husband and wife. And our favorite <laughs> book together is The Desire, Desire of Ages. Ages. Yes. And not only did he bring us together for marriage, but for the birth of Drug Alternative Program. And Drug Alternative Program is a 12 to 18 month residential recovery program for men addicted to drugs. And this is our 29th year in ministry. Yes. And our whole purpose is to help men not only get off drugs, but to be changed mentally, physically, and spiritually. And we have a client with us from DAP, Juan Gutierrez. Welcome, Juan. Thank you. Know, you know, we had Juan's wife on, uh, Sylvia, and I think we're gonna show you an excerpt from her program. And we want to bring Juan on to let you meet who he is and who he, she was talking about. So give us something about Juan. Tell us about Juan. What was your drug of choice? My drug of choice, most of all, was alcohol, cocaine, and methamphetamine. Okay. So, so give us maybe one of the most devastating things you feel and you know you have done to your wife and to your children to everyone, especially your wife and children, your right. family. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I have hurt my wife a lot. And one that gets to me the most is when she was five months pregnant and I was out with another girl cheating on her. I get to the house to drop off the girl, not knowing that my wife was down the street in a car. She comes up, opens my door, and I get scared. And she's yelling, get out, get out. I drive off in my car, and I drag her a mm. couple feet. Mm. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> that one is probably the most that hurts me the most. Because even to now, I think about it, and I break down a lot. And it, 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 I re remember it so clearly, and the pain that, I, that, that I've done to her, and the pain that has been done to me in my so what happened as a result of your dragging her? I scraped her, her whole side, mm. her leg. And this happened seven years ago. Mm. Every time I see her wear sandals, I see that scratch. Mm. And it, 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 it brings me back to how I used to be and all the pain that I have caused. Mm -hmm. So how did the children react to that? My, my children weren't there. But at, through all my life, I've been causing pain to mm -hmm. er, everybody on a daily basis. Even my oldest daughter, she's 10 years old right now. I have caused a lot of pain to her. 
Tell us an incident with the pain you caused before her. Before I came here to DAP, a month before, I got home from work. We're all sitting, they're all sitting. My wife, Sylvia, was cooking. And she said, Juan, um, get ready because we're about to eat dinner. We ate dinner. I was upset because of work already. So I was like, oh, I'm not hungry. I'm going to stay and watch TV. She was like, oh, well, then please join us for prayer. I was like, all right. So I get up. We, we have a prayer. I go back to the couch, and she eats. My children are like, Dad, you're not going to come eat? I'm like, no, I ate at work. Don't bother me. Let me watch TV. Mm. So on. They finish eating. They pick up. And then my, da my daughter, the oldest, Felicity, she was like, Dad, um, I have a question for you. I was like, yes. Uh, I have um, a report that I got to turn in for um, my Pathfinders for church. And I want to do an interview on you. Is that okay? I'm like, yeah, what is it? And she was like, what, um, the, the, ans the, answer the question was, why, do you wanna why are you a seven-day at Venice? I answered very bad. I said, oh, don't ask me. Go ask your mom. She left crying, and she came back. Dad, you're never there for me. Mm. You, ne you never want to do things with me. And cried. And it, it hurted me because my 10-year-old was telling me this. Mm. I said, go ask your mom. She's like, no, I want to do it with you because you're my dad, and I want to ask you this. Mm. And that, till now, I wrote about it here at DEP in my journal because I think about all the pain I had cost her. And not just only that, her birthday's coming up, and I'm not going to be able to be part of it because I'm in a recovery that I need to better myself so I could love her. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm sitting here and I'm thinking what the story you did. And I was thinking about <clears throat> the same time that I had done to my children. You know, I, one time my son, he was just two, just barely walking. And you know what I did to him? I was washing the car and I had bought a bag of weed. And I set this weed down, and he had gotten hold to the bag of weed. And he dumped it out all on the grass, where I couldn't even retrieve it. He was just two or three years old. And you know, I whipped him. Innocent child. Innocent child. That I had whipped him, man. That what a dog I had done, because I put the weed, the drug, before my child and how I reacted to that, to my child. And I'm looking at you and you're thinking or saying, hey, you know, this is what I did to my daughter and she's crying. That, that there gets me. And all you're doing is just telling me that story. Where's the feelings behind it, Juan? Where is the, where is the down in the gut that you know what you have been in? All of us have been just dogs to our children, to our wives, to our parents, to people all around us, and doing it to ourselves. Where is it, man? You know what, well, Mr. Harris, is right here. But I'm so broken in my heart that it's hard for me to express it, express my feelings. I've been through so much in my life. I'm not going to put an excuse, but I'm broken inside. I, I pray to God every morning to heal me and help me get my... Uh, heal me from all this pain. I have been through so much in my life since I was a little boy. I've been bullied, humiliated by family members, Aunts, mom, my stepfather abused me my whole life. So now it's hard for me to let out. I pray to God every morning, God, heal me because I am a broken person inside. Not just me, but now my family is broken. Every day. I think about them. There's not a day that I don't think about them. I think about Sylvia, personally, Felicity, 
Nathan and Jasleen. And now, it's sad to say, but I give my daughter Jasleen a special place in me. And I shouldn't do that because they're all my loved ones and my whole family. We're all one. It's, it's not easy. It's a process that I'm going through in life. But I know now that I have accepted God in my life, He's going to heal me. And He's going to help me be a better man. And every day, I go to my Bible and I read every morning. He reveals stuff to me. <laughs> and it just, it's, it's hard. But I put all my faith that He's going to heal me, he and my family, and put us back together. So who walk Christ's life. You know what, Ron? Yes. I always felt that goodness from you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know the pain about how you've been abused with family members. I didn't know all of that. You know, this is this is the time to bring all of that pain out, and that helps you deal with it. You know? Yeah. And what we all have been to our children, right today, I know it has affected my son, my daughter, and me and people around me. My son to day day, to this day, he's never gotten married. And you know why I think because of that? Is that he's seen what our marriage was like at that home. And he loves children. He loves and wants to have children. But he's never had that relationship. So what we do in our lives, what we have done, affects our children. And I know you're feeling that now. You, that's what it's all about. And God is going to heal you. He is going to make you the man you want to be. He is going to make you... And you allow him to do that, the father and the husband that you can be. You know, like I said, it all starts from childhood. You know, mm -hmm. it started with the abuse in your family, you know, from your father, from your mother, from, you know, relatives. That's where it started, it started from. So we're running out of time right now. When we come back, we want to tell the good part of what the Lord has done for you and what has happened to you since you've been here at DAP and what's happening with your family, your, your wife and your children. We'll be we'll right be back. back. So coming through these doors at DAP, uh, it's taught me a lot about myself and it's still teaching me to this day that I continue to look within myself and search myself on a daily basis because I'm not perfect and I still fall short. But one thing I do know, I have people here at DAP that is not afraid to pull my shirt, my shirt tail and tell me, hey, you need to get back in line. Growing up, there wasn't a lot of love. Um, didn't have a father. Um, my mother was an addict. And so when I came here, I experienced a lot of security, a lot of love. Um, tough love, and that's what, that's what I needed, is what I was seeking out, and the Lord helped me to get to a place where that, that existed. What brought me here this time is the shame and guilt that I felt from all the years of, of using drugs, and I abandoned my family, and my wife, and my kids, and my grandkids, and three good jobs. And I was walking the streets of Seattle one night, and I realized I was without hope. And my parents encouraged me to make that call. And it took a while, but I finally made that call. And I knew what I was getting to coming to DAP, but once I got here, I felt the love and discipline that I needed. I'm looking forward to finding out whatever's left of my gifts that I haven't diminished or completely squandered. I'd like to not only be a participant, but also a spectator in my life, you know, and seeing what what extraordinary things God could do with me and do with my life. As soon as I came to DAP, God was introducing my life again. I've been going to worship every day. Uh, we go to church every Saturday. And uh, I've learned new things from the people that I live with, you know, how they do things, how they pray. And uh, before we go to work, we all gathered around and pray. 
before we go to sleep. That was not my habit before. I've never, I've never think about God at all when I was out there. It did shock me the, the long amount of time that it was going to take. But I see it as a positive because they're not trying to just uh, change you for a, a short amount of time. They're trying to change you inward, spiritually, to get you connected with God and to get you to really know who you really are. I didn't know who I was. I didn't love myself. And I, I've learned that here, learned how to love myself, to, be, to, to love myself for who I really am and who God wants me to be. Without the donors keeping the doors of DAP open, I wouldn't have learned the value of helping other people because in my addiction I was selfish and self-centered. Um, and by the donors keeping the doors of DAP open, I have learned that helping other people is what uh, this life is all about. And I just remember saying, God, what did I do to live this life? But at the time, I didn't know that. I didn't understand that God didn't want that for me. He didn't want that for me. So I kept on living it 12 years. When I made the decision to change that lock to get Juan out of the house, it's because I told God to help me break those chains. Because I knew I was part of the chain my parents lived. And I refused to let my children go through the same thing. That was Sylvia Gutierrez, Juan's wife, expressing her pain and hurt Juan, how did that make you feel? It made me feel real bad. It brought me back memories of how I used to be with her and all the stuff that I have done to her. But just the fact that she's still here. You know, she, you've caused her a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, but she's still here. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel bad, but in another way it makes me feel good. And the reason it makes me feel bad is because she's still there for me. She believes that I'm want this and I truly do I really want to change I don't want to be like that no more and sometimes I even think that I don't deserve her no, no more because I made her go through so much in, in her life but one thing is for sure that God has him haven't hasn't gave up on me mm -hmm. and I'm not going to give up on him and I'm gonna put him first so I could be a better man uh, share with us some of your childhood experiences that had made you the man that you are to treat your wife the way you treated her? My mom was physically and verbally abused by my stepdad on a daily basis. Was he an alcoholic? He was an alcoholic, a drug addict, but not just that. When they divorced, when I was 10 years old, my mom was so hurt and broken inside that she wouldn't show no feelings. Mm. And that's something that I seen and that I see myself doing now in my life. She never was affectionate to me. Even recently, I seen her in February. I went to Texas to visit her. It's been three years since I seen my mom. Mm. It was so hard for her to give me a hug and tell me, son, I love you. I had to go and approach her and give her a hug. Mm. Even when I did that, she pushed me away like, mm. it's okay, Juan. I'm right here. I'm happy to see you. But she never expressed it and gave me the hug and told me she still loves me. Mm. And now I see myself doing that with my children, especially with Felicity, my oldest. Every day she tells me when we used to get up, Dad, I love you. Jump on me in the bed. And I'll be like, Mama, get away. So don't, don't hug me. It irritated you. Yeah. And, and, it, and not just irritated me, but I have never felt love like that in my life. Mm, wow. How did you feel, and you remember that incident mm -hmm. with your mother, mm -hmm. that feeling of uh, your mama Rejection. is pushing you away, you know, and, and you're searching for that love and, and that acceptance. 
I felt really bad, worthless. Like, wow, am I not worth nothing in my in my life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not even my mom could give me a hug. Mm -hmm. But I now I understand because she's been through so much in her life that she's broken in her, in her own life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how did, I know I, uh, Sylvia told us that your children, they still love you so much, but they're having nightmares. You know, they, they wake up in the middle of the night and all these changes that they're going through. And Sylvia's like, what do I do? You know, how did you relate to your children when you were in the home? The truth, I was not affectionate with them. I would not. It's not easy for me to tell them I love you or hug them. But... I know I affect him a lot because my son Nathan, he's seen all the stuff that I did in my life. And I know he's been affected a lot because he acts rebellious now. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Harris told me last time, Juan, I need to talk to you. I said, yeah, sure. He's like, how have you affected your children? How have you affected your son Nathan? And, and I said, I have affected him a lot because of all the mean stuff I told them. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. And now he's so affected that he acts rebellious at school. He doesn't want to be obedient to his mom. He doesn't want to listen to his mom. He doesn't want to go to church. And that's because of I've been showing him in life. Mm -hmm. and, mm. not, and not just that. It just it hurts me and it eats me up inside. Knowing that my son is 10 years old and I do not want him to be 18, 19 years old, and be like me. I want him to be loving like God made us, how God loves us. And, you know, that's what you have to do is show that love to him, teach him how to love. And that comes from you. you demonstrating and letting him know that. And he'll learn that, and he'll pass that on right to his children. See, that's why God says generation from generation. Let the cycle stop with you right now, from your parents, from the parents before, and let it stop with you. You have that opportunity to do that, Juan. And I believe in you that you want to do that. And you can with God's help. That's the only way you're going to do it, not on your own. You tried to do it on your own before, and it didn't work. It didn't work. Yes. Juan, you've been in the program now for three months. How do you feel about the program? What have you learned? Tell us what's happening with you here at DAP. One of the main things that I have learned here is that I need to love myself in order to love others. Mm -hmm. In order to love myself, to be able to love my wife and my three children. Mm -hmm. But not only just love them, have a love for God. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things that I have learned here is that I'm doing this for myself. I need to fix my brokenness first mm -hmm. in order for me to go out and fix any other broken hearts. Mm -hmm. So you're having one-on-one -on -one counseling, mm -hmm. you're having group counseling, and you're writing papers every day. Mm -hmm. So how has that helped you, you know, that journaling? Oh, that has helped me tremendously <laughs> because I have never wrote any of these stories down. Mm -hmm. And not just that, last Wednesday I, had my count I was talking to my counselor and I was telling him, how much stuff I've been through in my life. And that just lifted a lot of stuff off my chest mm -hmm. and cleared up my chest, you mm -hmm. know? And not just only that, but every day on a daily basis, I try to write something on my journal, mm -hmm. what I think about, what I, um, when I'm at work, if I'm feeling down or I'm happy, I have a prayer mm -hmm. to keep me motivated and keep going, keep me strong so I could be strong mentally to go through this because I know deep in my heart that I do not want to go back to the, my old lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I don't got another chance because Sorry. I could go back out there and get drunk and kill somebody in the highway mm -hmm. or even kill myself. Mm. You know, I was thinking about when your family came to the graduation, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you all were sitting over there at a table and I noticed, Freddie, that its boy was all like this, <laughs> all up under his daddy, just yeah. hanging on to you, man. For dear life. For dear life. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, if I don't, 
hang on to you, I'll fall and die. Yeah. <laughs> and see, that's, that's where you need to show him that affection. And you know what? All the guys noticed that, that your children were just all over you, man. And that's a blessing within itself. Amen. So take that. And you can, that's your high. Yes, it you is. You were high that night. You don't know that was the best drunk you ever had. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's true. Yes. I agree. And, and what did it cost? Did you have to pay anything it for it? It cost me nothing. Free. Nothing. Free. That's Just it. being sober. Yes. And being happy. And right. now, that's one thing that I'm learning here now. I used to be real grouchy. I would never smile. And now... All my brothers at the house, they say, Juan, you need to stop smiling. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm happy now. I'm a happy person, you know? Right. I'm not. The, the real you is coming out. Yeah. The real me is coming out now. That's it. You know, That's it. to get all that pain and that hurt, and you have a lot of pain. Yes, I do. And Sylvia has a lot of pain, a lot of hurt. And we see it all started from both of your childhoods. Mm -hmm. You know, And God takes those circumstances into consideration when he thinks of the way you treated your wife when you think of what Sylvia's gone through because you both married you know and with the intention of not being like your mother not being like your father so now he's brought you back together you both have the same counsel that can work with you work with her work with your children and our goal for you is to bring your family back together because those children, they need their mom and they need their dad. And you, he is so blessed yes. to have Sylvia still in your life. Yeah. Is that? Harmony. You harmony. want to bring in harmony with the Lord, Amen. with your whole children. That's what God is expecting you to do. Mm -hmm. You know what, man? You don't know, but you have blessed me mm -hmm. in all of my life. And what I'm doing right now, to see the things and changing that you go through. And I want to grow even stronger in Christ. Yes, and me seeing you and Mrs. Harris, that love that you guys have for each other, that's the same love I want to have towards Sylvia now. Amen. Praise Amen. Him, praise Amen. Him. You know what? Thank you for coming and sharing. Would you like to say something to the audience out there? Look in that camera. Would you want to say something to someone out there? Yes, I want to say. about 20 seconds. <laughs> yes, I want to say something. I'm going to tell you guys one thing. You cannot do it on your own. Because if you try doing it on your own, you're always going to be the same. Give God a chance and believe, and believe in God. Because he's the one that really changes everyone in life. Amen. Thank you so much. And don't forget, the telephone, give us a call. We want to hear from you. We want you to pray for us. You, you, in this program, you see we need some prayer. Okay? <laughs> so we're looking forward to hearing from you. And remember, we love you. And Jesus loves you even more. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Was that Ron. better with Yeah, that was much oh, better. Right. That's the feeling. Yeah. See, I, I know it's in there, man.